to my kings, queens, and in-betweens. Welcome to the Bookish Valkyrie. I am Valerie, and today we are going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. And uh, this is also my very first video, so bear with me and all of my awkwardness. So question number one, how is your reading going? Uh, this year, my reading experience has been a little different uh, than recent years. Uh, previously, I was reading predominantly romance because the world was on fire and that's what I could handle. But this year, I've definitely been spreading back out into the genres that I enjoyed before. Uh, lots of horror and sci-fi. Well, no, sci-fi is new. Uh, lots of horror and um, fantasy and just contemporary literature that's not necessarily romantically inclined. Um, and that's been a really fun uh, experience to be digging back into. For the second question, uh, best book that you've read so far, I'm going to go with the Network Effect by Martha Wells. Um, it is the fifth book in the Murderbot Diaries, and um, so I can't really talk a lot about it uh, without spoilers for the rest of the series, but definitely my favorite installment in the series. And I will talk about the series itself a little bit more later, because uh, it's definitely going to show up again in these questions. For the third question, best sequel you've read so far this year, I'm going to have to go with Don't Fear the Reaper. Uh, it is the sequel to uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw. I think it's actually the second book in a trilogy, but the third book has not dropped yet. Um, I don't know if we even have a title for it yet. But uh, it is following up with the main character from My Heart is a Chainsaw, Jade, but now she's going by Jennifer. Um, and she hasn't been to her hometown in a few years, like four, I think it's four years. And she is seeing everything that's changed and everything that hasn't changed. And uh, once again is finding herself in the middle of a slasher film. But, you know, it's her real life. So that's fun and delightful. Lots of uh, horror elements, lots of blood and gore and uh, misdirection. It's a good time. For the fourth question, um, favorite reread, I'm going to go with Felix Ever After. It is one of my absolute favorites. It was an instant classic for me the first time I read it, and I think that it should be required reading for everyone. Um, I don't want to go too far into details, but this is following a artistic kid through his uh, summer classes, um, and he is trans, and he is dealing with some uh bullying at school and he takes some some interesting um sorry about all the laughing my husband's downstairs um but anyhow back to felix he is just a wonderfully complicated flawed character who is figuring things out and at some points figuring things out that he thought he already had figured out. I know, shocker, high school kid who doesn't know everything. But uh, it's a wonderful book, a wonderful story, and I think everyone should read it. And then for question number five, uh, genre you've been loving slash reading the most and for me that's a little bit of a toss-up between sci-fi and horror although I think if we go with what you're reading the most horror is winning out but 
I've really been loving sci-fi. Uh, and that's been a real surprise for me because I've, I've never been a big sci-fi girly. Definitely been more romance, horror, fantasy with sci-fi as a once in a while thing. Uh, but very much enjoying all of the cozy sci-fi that and the character driven sci-fi that I've been reading lately. Um, so I think I maybe have found my sci-fi niche. And so yeah, definitely horror sci-fi kind of year. For question number six, a uh, new release that you haven't read yet, I'm going to go with This Delicious Death by Kayla Cottingham. Uh, she is the same author who wrote um, My Dearest Darkest, which I really loved. It was just a great read, and I'm hoping that this is going to be a great read, too. This one is following a group of girls who live in a world where zombies are a thing, and they're pretty normal. Uh, well, normal the way that vampires are in True Blood. Um, <laughs> where they have, um, like fake flesh available to them, uh, to keep their, uh, zombie behaviors in check. And these girls are doing a final hurrah before gradu graduation and, um, I think they're going to a festival or something like that, maybe an amusement park, something with a large group of people. Um, and they have their cooler full of faux flesh to keep the party rolling. Uh, but something is going wrong with the zombie citizens in this uh, story. Something has happened and they are all kind of losing their minds. And so we'll see where that goes. Question number seven, your most anticipated release for the second half of the year. <sighs> there are so many and I absolutely can't pick one. So I picked four. Um, all right. So, and this one I have to read off. So forgive me for not looking at the camera. Um, all right. So August 22nd, Knockout, uh, the third book in the Hell's Bells series by Sarah McLean is coming out. This one is... Uh, it's, it's a romance um, and it's set in Victorian times and the Hells Bells are a group of uh, women on the outskirts of society for one reason or another who have banded together to take down the patriarchy. <laughs> uh, help mostly, really they're looking to help uh, other women who are in sticky situations, whatever that may look like. And um, the third book is about Imogen and my husband is very loud. So yeah, the third book is about Imogen and she has an explosive personality and I can't wait. And then on August 29th, Night of the Living Queers, 13 Tales of Terror and Delight, an anthology by various authors will be dropping and uh, the common thing that I've been seeing from people with uh, early reviews is that like every story hits and that's always a problem with anthologies at least for me is is finding a collection where you're not there just for one or two of the books but you're you are enjoying each and every story in this in the anthology so I'm really excited for this one August 7th uh, Bookshops and Bone Dust, which is the prequel for Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry, is going to be dropping. Uh, Legends and Lattes is one of my favorite reads from last year, um, and I just, I can't get enough of the, uh, high fantasy, the low stakes high fantasy, and it's just such a fun, cozy read, and I'm very excited for this next installment. And then the one that 
I just am dying for. So I guess I could have narrowed it down to just this one, but I, I had to talk about those other ones first. Um, but on November 14th, uh, Systems Collapse by Martha Wells, the sixth book in the Murderbot Diaries is dropping, and I absolutely cannot wait. I am so stinking excited. On to question number eight, biggest disappointment. Uh, this one really was such a disappointment for me. I really desperately wanted to re to love this book. Uh, and that is Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. Um, it's a short story collection of horror stories that are uh, feminist and it, they really are really well written. I only made it about halfway through the book before I had to DNF it because I just was not connecting with any of it. Um, it's possible that it was just a me thing, so it's not it's not a hard DNF. Uh, we'll stick it in the soft DNF pile, but definitely my biggest disappointment so far this year. All right, and then number nine, biggest surprise, I went with Fina by Nino Cipri. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, this is the book that solidified the, the sci-fi genre as one that I was really enjoying this year. I, I just couldn't believe how much I was enjoying this. Uh, this one follows two employees for a knockoff um, Ikea company, a little bit like um, Horror Store by Grady Hendrix, um, only less horror, there is a little bit of horror in there, but less horror, more sci-fi, more interdimensional travel uh, and ex drama because these two employees are exes. and. It's just a fun little romp that I really won't go into because it's just so short and I don't want to ruin it for anyone. This next one is actually going to be my answer for both 11 and 12. Uh, 11 is newest, uh, our favorite new author and number 12 is uh, newest favorite character. So my newest uh, author obsession is Martha Wells, and my favorite character this year so far is Murderbot. Um, so this book is um, All Systems Red. Um, it's the first book in the Murderbot Diaries, and I just cannot get enough of Murderbot. Uh, the first four books are novellas. They're all really quick reads. Uh, but they get into a lot of depth and detail while being intensely funny. Uh, <laughs> by the end of this story, you are fully invested in Murderbot and all of his squishy humans that he is grudgingly keeping alive. Um, and that is all I really want to say about that because I, you just got to dive in and enjoy the ride that is Murderbot. Now for the book that made me cry, I don't have a physical copy of it yet, but I actually just finished reading this uh, earlier this week and it is Imogen, obviously, by Becky Albertalli. Um, this is a YA edging into new adult. Um, it's technically YA because uh, the main character is still in high school. She's finishing up her senior year. Um, but it the reason I feel like it's edging a little bit into new adult is because she is having her first college experience. Uh, she's visiting her best friend who is technically a year ahead of her. Um, I had that experience in high school as well. Um, <laughs> and the, the premise is that she is the only straight girl, the token straight girl, in her group of queer friends and 
uh, when she goes off to this uh, college visit, she starts to find out that maybe she's not so straight as she thought she was. And I definitely identify with that. I honestly wish I had had this book when I was in high school and when when you were at the crisis point in the story towards the end and you're having the confrontation with someone important to Imogen, um, I just lost it. I was crying buckets of tears. I had to stop reading for a little bit and calm down before I could finish reading the book. Uh, definitely the book that has made me cry this year. Now for question 13, the book that made you happy. I went with uh, Izzy at the End of the World by K.A. Reynolds. I loved this book so much. It was just absolutely delightful. It's a middle grade story that is a little bit sci-fi, or it's a lot of bit sci-fi, um, a little bit horror, a little bit um, coming of age, and a lot of adventure. And it's just such a good book, and I think everybody needs to read it. All right, so for the number 14, most beautiful book you've bought you this year, there's actually a tie uh, between Nettle and Bone. And I mean, look at this cover, it's a special edition. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. There we go. And it has some beautiful edges that are sprayed and stenciled. And it's signed. Um, I love the color combination. It's just so pretty. Um, T. Kingfisher is just one of my absolute favorite authors. Uh, also new to me, but not new this year. Um, and this is definitely hands down my favorite book from T. Kingfisher. Um, it's a cozy, grim, dark, grim, dark, cozy fantasy. Yeah, grim, dark, cozy fantasy. And it's just such a good read. good read and a beautiful edition. And then the one that tied for the, that is uh, Holly Black's Book of Night. Uh, this was her first, oh, look at these end pages. Oh, you can't see it very well, but it looks like a night sky. There's some stars and clouds it's so pretty and it's got a beautiful pretty blue with the foiling and it's just uh, such a cute, pretty addition um this is holly black's first uh adult fantasy or adult paranormal fantasy uh urban fantasy and it's set in a world where uh, magic is real and the way that you have magic is if you have quickened your shadow so that your shadow is alive and so it's a, a shadow magic world and it's grim it's fun and a little bit twisted sometimes a lot of it twisted um, and I know a lot of people, this has been pretty divisive for people, a lot of people did not love it, but I think that that's because they were coming into it from Cruel Prince expecting more fairy things and uh, they weren't quite ready for um, something that doesn't involve the fae. Um, I don't know, that's just my thought on that. but definitely a great book and a beautiful edition. All right, so for number 15, oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of books. <laughs> it's uh what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Uh so I'm going to 
start off with Girls Like Girls by Hailey Kiyoko. Hailey Kiyoko is my queen. I don't care if this stinks or is the best thing ever. I needed to own it because Hailey Kiyoko. Um, I'm really hoping it's great. It's based on her, uh, the story in her music video, video Girls Like Girls. And um, honestly, that video, that video had me in a chokehold for the first year that it was out and I still love it. Um, I just, I'm really excited for this book. Now this next book that I need to read by the end of the year is actually a soft DNF that I started earlier, actually, I guess later last year. I started it in October, um, but I had to put it down because of mental health reasons. Um, I was pretty deep in a depressive swing and um, my chronic illness was acting up and between that and the gaslighting that I ran into, the heavy, heavy gaslighting that I ran into at the section that I put the book down at, I just could not, could not continue reading the book. But I really want to finish it before the end of the year. So this is kind of towards the top of my TBR. I'm, I'm not a big TBR girly because I'm very much a mood reader, but so far as the pool of books that I'm pulling from, that's definitely one that I am prioritizing. Next up, I have a couple of horrors. This one is The Liminal Zone by Jinji, Jinji Ito? Jinju? Junji Ito. <laughs> um, I have really been getting into manga this year as well, and with... Uh, horror being something that I've uh, been delving back into, I felt like this was a really good uh, meeting point on the Venn diagram of the two. Um, I heard about this one, uh, or the first time I heard about this was on the uh, Books in the Freezer podcast, uh, which I absolutely recommend. It's a great podcast uh, if you're interested in horror. In anything horror all things horror it's great all right and next I have you're not supposed to die tonight by Kaylin Bayron um, this is a YA horror uh, the main character is sapphic uh, she is uh, playing a the part of the final girl in a full contact um, summer haunted house experience or haunted camp experience um and she's had a great time playing the final girl but now they're in their last week and people are disappearing and now being the final girl is becoming more and more real and i'm really excited for that on this next one i have been told that you want to go in blind all i really know about this is that it is set in uh, the Old West, like the frontier times. <laughs> and the, it's during the time when they were uh, giving lone women uh, parcels of land to entice them out into the West. Um, and it is following a woman who has a mysterious trunk with her. And whenever she opens the trunk, people disappear or die. So... That's all I know about it, but I'm really intrigued and everyone that I have seen review it has just gushed about how much they loved this book. And then uh, next up I have a romance. This one is Georgie All the Way by Kate Claiborne. Um, I own a few Clay Kate Claiborne books, but I've not actually started reading any of them. And I think I want to start my Kate Claiborne experience with this book. I know that some people will be really disappointed in me that I've never read her, uh, but this book sounds really fun and refreshing. It's uh, following a woman who is having a late in life restart, and that's definitely something I very much identify with. So I'm excited to see how that story goes. Next up, I have The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi by 
Shannon Chakraborty. Um, I think my husband just died on WoW. <laughs> Very tragic, I'm sure. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> this follows a woman who is a retired pirate captain. Uh, she is asked to go on one last swashbuckling adventure to save the child of a former crew member. And uh, she is being enticed with riches and glory and going down in history as a legend. So... I don't know what's not to love about that. And now for a couple of bonus questions that were added by Books and Lala. Um, the first one being, what's your favorite video that you've done this year? And that would be this one because it's the only one. <laughs> so easy answer. Um, and then the second question is, uh, who are your favorite uh, book community members or bookish community members? Uh, so obviously there's Books and Lala. I love her. Uh, Criminali. Uh, beautifully Bookish Bethany. Uh, bookish Realm. Happy for Now. My Name is Marianas. Chronicles of Noria. Uh, Reads with Rachel. Uh, Mel Reads. How to Train Your Gavin. Throne of Pages, a model who's read, who's actually the one I've been watching the longest. I've been watching her since pretty close to the beginning <laughs> of, of, of uh, her channel, of, like when she was new with uh, Word Nerds. Uh, so a special shout out to her. And uh, Books Like Woe are all the people who, like, I watch every one of their videos. Um, so I've got them all linked below and I've, along with my socials and uh, I think that's all she wrote. Uh, have a great day or night or whatever time of day it is for you and see you next video. Stars to my kings, queens, and in-betweens. Uh, this is the... Hey, hi, hello there. Welcome to my channel. Let's try that again. That was a little... And I'm gonna redo that. Well, that's it. Thanks for joining me for my very first booktube video. Uh, I'm excited to start this journey and... Maybe. Maybe still this video. Ugh. Click. You done?